Welcome back, everyone, to Nova Scotia. Well, this is the last concrete pot that I made. And it was made with this trowel. And I'm sure some of you by now have made one of these trowels and started making these pots. And you've, you found out how difficult they can be. But today's video is going to be on how to make this pot. And this pot came about because I was having a problem with the concrete. It was a little too soupy and wasn't standing up right. So that's when I went and got the form boards and, and changed the plan and, and this pot came out of it. But I really like this pot now. I like the 45 corners on it. And it's almost impossible to get a good 45 corner with the trowels on one. So. I've got this one all recorded, and we'll watch it together, and I'll give you pointers as we go. So let's get started. So the first thing is to get your sand for the inside of the pot. And I'm building this sand on a piece of half inch birch plywood. So it's a real combination of using your hands and a trowel and a little plywood jig that I've made. So the first thing, of course, is to get it up on there. So this little plywood jig has a one inch notch at the bottom and it has a curve on the upright part. And that, that curve is really important because that makes the inside of your pot have that curve in it. And this allows trees to come in and out of the pot really easy when you, when you repot. And it also lets the tree frost heave upwards if it freezes in there. So that's a pretty important thing to build into your into your jig. So it's a real combination of using using the trowel and your hands. And of course there has to be enough water in the in the sand to stick together. And when I'm making them with the trowel, that's a real issue of, of having how much sand is how much water is in the sand. But on this one, where we're going to use form boards, it's not that big, not that big of an issue. So you can make the sand a little wetter, and it makes it easier to to get the shape and and have it all stick together. So sometimes I go back to that plywood jig like that and use it to make sure that I've got the parameters all right. Because it's really important that it stays one inch on the on the sides where the concrete is going to go because I've learned that that's what makes these pots really strong. They need a one inch thick wall on them. So it wasn't quite sticking together really, really good for me. So thing to do is to, to add water to it. And you always want to spray the water on the sand so it, so it gets on there evenly. You can use a spray bottle or I'm using a pump sprayer here. A uh, pump sprayer is really valuable for, for all of the concrete pot making. I use it all the time now for, for spraying water on them. So using the trowel to pack the sand together is really important because you want to make this you want to make this sand really solid because once you get the forms on there and you start throwing concrete in there 
if you knock the sand with the concrete in it and it falls off then then you got a problem you gotta you gotta start over basically so so it's really important that you that you get enough water in the sand so it's sticking together really well and patting it with the trowel like that is what tells you if it's got enough water if it sticks together right so once you get it to where it's all looking good and you're happy with it it's important to to clean it really good to make sure that there's no no sand left because you don't want you don't want anything underneath the form board you want that form board right down on your table because that's what's going to make everything parallel So with this one, I want to really make sure that that sand is packed together good. So I'm adding a little more water to it. And all, all sand acts different. So you just have to, you have to, it's a feel thing. You can feel when it's sticking together good. So it's important to use a, a releaser. Uh, concrete likes to, likes to stick to everything. And WD-40 has become the thing that I use as a releaser for, for all of my projects. It, it works really well. And th this was some old plywood that I had that had, it had some paint on it. And that, that just makes it want to stick to concrete more. So there's a few different ways to do this. I, I like to use a, a little nail gun to put this board on, but you could drill holes in it and use screws if you're more comfortable with that. But I've, I've been a cabinet maker for a long time and I'm, I just like to use my, my nail gun. It's faster and I know that the nails aren't gonna hold really good in this, in this plywood and I'll be able just to get in there with a chisel and pop this board off. So basically you want to have one one side of the form that's going to that's going to be removable. And obviously you want to be you want to be careful when you put the form together that that you've got one inch all the way around but that little that little piece of plywood on the bottom is what i'm using to push the the form boards against so it it all comes out right so when i went to when i went to make this one i uh, you, you need to put a uh, some kind of a board across the top of the form and the sand was a little bit high in it so I had two options. I could I could either take the take the form boards off and and rework the sand, but that would have made a big mess and and I would have I basically had to start over with the sand. So I decided just to add some 3/8 shims to the bottom of the of the form board. So I ripped those up on the table saw and I'm just going to nail those on with the, with the brad nailer. So that gets my, that gets my form up high enough to where it's going to give me a, a half inch bottom in the pot. The 
but that's just one of those things you have to you have to figure out as you go so now that I've got the I've got a 3H shim on the bottom it's going to give me a good half inch bottom on the bottom of the pot But you always want to lay something across the top of the of the form so you can you can see what you're what you're going to end up with. It doesn't seem to be as critical to have a one inch on the bottom. It seems like the it, the sides are where are where they always crack if they're going to crack. So when you make your mix. You, you want to I always I always use two parts sand to one part Portland and you're basically trying to make brick mortar it can't be too soupy if you get if you get this too soupy when you go to apply feed on the bottom of this you'll you'll have a problem with it So brick mortar is really what you're shooting for. And you want to be really, really careful when you first start to put this concrete in there. You want to just use small amounts because you're trying to drop it down to the bottom of the form. And you don't want to disturb the sand. And once you get, once you get this layer all the way around the, the bottom of it, then then it gets easier. The next one is easier to put in. But the key is just to put it in in small, small amounts. And I don't really want to put it on the bottom right now. I just want to try to fill the, the side walls because we're, we're going to vibrate it and get that concrete to move down in there. And there's a few different ways you can, you can do that. I'm going to use a palm sander here in a minute on it. But I also used a hammer with it. And it seems to be, it seems, it seems to me to, to, that it's good to use both both things because they they kind of do a different a different thing to the to the concrete but the palm sander really really made it move down in there good I'm, I'll always use a, a palm sander on them So now I've got it filled up. And it's real it's really important to to take your time on this part to to make sure you get all this concrete to move down to the bottom of the form. That's what's going to make a a good pot for you because there's always air caught in the concrete and this is what releases that air. And a few little air bubbles don't look that bad on them, but if you don't do it enough, you might you might end up with a lot of them, and it, it just gets to the point where they don't look that good. So 
So the more you vibrate it and hit it with a hammer, the better. So now I'm putting all the concrete on where the bottom of the pot's going to be. So at this point all the sand's covered up. You don't have to worry about disturbing it anymore. This is when you really want to go to town on it with a with a sander and vibrate it. And I'll hit it with a hammer here in a minute. Anything you can do to get it to, to vibrate down in there. If you wanted to get really fancy, you could have a, a vibrating table. But tapping it on the sides is a really good idea. And troweling it down in there with the with the trowel. But the more time you spend on on this part, the better the pot's going to come out. It seemed to really help it to hit it hit it with the hammer. I could see it going down in there more. One of the good things about this this pot is because of all this vibrating and tapping on it it actually makes the inside of the pot come out really nice so there's not those the cracks that you get from when you use a trowel and I, I didn't even have to to go back and dress the inside of this pot it it all had conformed to the sand really nice so that eliminates a whole step on this on this kind of pot So now I'm trying to get what's sticking up above the form boards. And you want to, you want to, so I could feel when I was doing that, that there was some air caught in there. So I just poked it with a chisel there. <laughs> You're always trying to get the air out of something like this. Because you don't you don't want to put drainage holes in it until you get until you get it all right. So I'm trying to skim off everything that's sticking up above the above the form boards. And I'll use a screed board here in a minute. Just to finish it off. This gets it truly flat across there. Now is when you want to really trial it to get it smooth on the bottom. Get all the concrete cleaned off the top of the form. Because once you put drainage holes in it, you're not really want, gonna wanna gonna do that kind of stuff. So 
this is a piece of one inch copper and that's what I use for all of my my drain holes works really well and I've made many of these pots so I'm just I've gotten good at just eyeballing where these go but you can use a measuring tape if you need to but it is the bottom of the pot so you, you never really see them and you just turn it just like a just like a drill bit work it down in there So there we go, we've got our drainage holes in and we're going to be ready to put feed on it here in a minute. So this is a little trowel that I made. This is a, that's a piece of sheet metal that's three quarters of an inch tall and it's nailed to that block of wood. And I'm starting, I'm starting with these things three quarters of an inch tall, but I'm going to, I'm going to smush them down with a piece of plywood. So I'm, I'm trying to finish them off at a half inch tall feet is what looks really, really good to me. And it take it takes a while to get used to using the, the trowel and the putting the concrete in it you just have to get used to it but it works really well and this this gets the same amount of concrete on each each foot and gets a basic a basic shape going on it So it's important when you when you're when you're putting these feet on that the concrete is is stiff enough to to stand up. If if it's not, you can always add a little bit more Portland and sand to your mix. You never want to try to try to make feet like this if if it's not standing up to to gravity. So when you pull the trowel off, it, the concrete should should basically stay there so I'm going to flatten these feet here in a minute with a piece of plywood and it's really important that it's a flat piece of plywood birch plywood is really you can always depend on it being really flat but other plywoods are not that way so you really want to look at your piece of plywood you're going to use because this is this is when these feet are going to be flattened to where that the pot's not going to teeter. So that's a really that's a really important thing. So this is a piece of of birch plywood, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna set it on there and tap it you don't have to tap very hard just gently tap it and look under there and try to get them all even so when you do this this is this is going to make them all kind of look like a mud pie So now you got to go back with the trowel and, and square them all up. Putting the feet on these is, pro is probably the hardest part, the most tedious part. And you have to take your time and, and not rush it. And once you get them, once you get them cut back into a square shape, you, you can let it sit for a while. 
let it let it set up because as the concrete sets up it gets easier and easier to to work it so once i get them cut into that into a square shape i usually i usually let it sit for a while and take a little break from it and put the put the plywood back and give it a little tap very lightly you're always trying to flatten them So this is another trowel that I made. This is a, just a little piece of sheet metal that's cut at a half inch and it's screwed to that that block to make a handle. And that allow this allows me to trowel the sides of the feet. And this is what this is what really cleans them up and makes them look good. And it actually creates a slurry that that makes them stick to the to the pot really good so it's an important step so I'll use that trowel all the, all the way around on them So this is a, a sponge that um, is a, it was a round sponge and I, I cut them in half so that I get a good 45 on them so I can get right in there against the sides of the feet. So I've, I've let them sit for, for a while and then I'm going to sponge the whole, the whole bottom of the pot and the, along the edges of the, of the feet. You're just always trying to refine them and, and make them look good. And a wet sponge works really good on the concrete. And I usually use it all over the bottom of it. So that's pretty much done with the feet. So I'm using a nail here to put my initials in it. Get the JD in there. That's how I sign them now. So it's been 24 hours now, and lots of times the feet come out with a little hump right in the middle of them. So this is the time when you can you can take care of that hump and. And you can you can put that piece of plywood back on there and look under there and see and see if you've got a hump in your top of your feet. But you can also just see it and and feel it. And at 24 hours, it it you can you can sand that that hump out of the feet. And get them flat. You're always trying to make them flat, obviously, so it'll sit on a table without teetering. So I'll, I'll also sign, I'll also sand the the sides of the of the feet at this point just to ease the edges on them. Concrete concrete responds to the sandpaper really well at 24 hours. So I'm just going to take a chisel and and pop those those brad nails out. Take that take that first piece off. So this this was some old plywood that had some paint on it so 
some of the paint stuck to it there a little bit but it came right off with some some sandpaper it's always good to tap the form to get it to release So at this point I want to use sandpaper on it to, to ease all the edges on the bottom of it. And this is your chance to, to sand the, the feet back so it's all flush with the, with the pot. Twenty four hours is the magic time when, when you can do this kind of work to it. If you wait longer, it gets too hard, and you, you you just be rubbing it with the sandpaper and wasting your time. But at 24 hours, you can actually you can actually shape it with the sandpaper. So that that foot there, I, it was sticking out a little bit, so that's why I was I was really sanding on that one. So you're, you might be stuck down to the table. So I'm, this one was stuck pretty good to the table. So I'm going around it with a chisel and just cleaning off that concrete to get it to get it to release from the table. And turning them over is always kind of tricky. You just have to get your hands under it any way you can and turn it over. So you never want to try to just yank that plywood off. You always want to hit it with a with a piece of wood to to cause it to break away from the concrete. So at this point I'm using the trowel to, to work that edge where I've got a lot of concrete sticking up. Once I get once I get most of it off of there, then I'll I'll go back to the sandpaper and and finish it off and put a nice radius all the way around on the top of it. So it's time to get all the sand out of it and this is the time to to really work it with the sandpaper and put a nice radius on all the sharp edges because using using form boards like that it comes out really sharp so I'm sanding it all around Sanding that edge on the 45 corner. So there you go, this is when you can do a happy dance because you just made a pot for a dollar's worth of Portland. So you can see that the sides came out really nice inside of it. All the vibrating and I only got a few air bubbles in it. But they don't bother me at all, I'm, I'm just leaving them. If you, don't, if you don't like them, you can go back and fill them, fill them in at this point, but I was really happy with the way this one came out.
Okay, I hope that gives you a new project to try. With the first pot that I made this way, I ended up putting my Don, my one Don Redwood in it that I got from a hundred seeds I had. But one's better than nothing. I hope everyone's having a great bonsai day. And I'll see you next time on Bonsai by the Sea.